Hello, hello, Scorpio. Welcome to your October 2018 overview reading. This is good for you if you're a sun, moon, or rising Scorpio. And let's see. Go ahead, tune in with yourself. Just see if there's something that wants to come up today or if there's a specific intention that you have for today's reading. If there's some answer that you're looking for, just kind of set set your intention there. And I also want to let you know that I have some housekeeping stuff to go over at the end, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. And I also have some exciting news. I got a mailbox, so now I am able to receive um, letters and uh, snail mail, essentially. So that is super exciting, so you're, you're welcome to um, check that out as well in the description box. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Cards are falling all over the place. Okay, and then I'm going to start off with the Oracle cards today. So we'll see what's coming up in October. All right, first thing we have is Centered. It looks like you're really finding some balance with yourself. Uh, there's quite this energy of you kind of coming back to yourself, kind of getting grounded. I think this is going to be a good season for you. Like it's just going to, the the winding down as we shift seasons is going to be really, really helpful for you. So this looks really, really good. Let's see what the Witchling card is. Sanctuary. With a calm, focused mind and enjoyment of each moment, you create your very own sanctuary. I'm getting that this is bringing you back to domestic things. And, uh, not domestic issues, but like what's going on in your physical space? What's going on at home? What's going on in the area where you rest and relax? That's kind of where you want to start building an oasis for yourself. And I think that's going to help you feel more grounded with all of this. And um, this is also something that really does take practice and time. So it's kind of like that evolution of the more you give to your environment and like making yourself comfortable as best as you can with the resources that you have right now, that's what's going to help you a lot. And then we also have Crow. So good time to manifest. A really good time to manifest from what I'm seeing. So Take advantage of the energies during October to start building your your plans, your vision for 2019. I think it's going to be a good time to start this process in October. Um, and then moving, moving into the later months, it's going to get more potent. Okay, and then we have decoy. Look for the true culprit. Self-sabotage, maybe at work. Evaluate if it's something you really need to do or if it's attempting distraction. Okay, so there's a lot of like awareness that's coming up with the decoy card. It's really about you um, paying attention to what's really going on. Like if you're finding yourself wanting to slip into um, engaging with vices or bad habits, what's the underlying need that isn't being met? That's really the question that you want to ask. Okay, now the central energy for you this month is judgment. This has been coming up a lot um, with these readings. So it's like final decisions, feeling grounded, feeling stable, feeling like um, there's just some sense of finality going on here. So that looks really, really good. Um, it's just, it has more to do with it being centered. Like that's what the judgment card is reflecting. It's like, okay, you're, you're feeling more at peace 
with the way things are in present time and being able to navigate through these waters the way they are. It's kind of like you can only deal with what you're working with in this moment. It's not about focusing on when I get that thing or when I have more money or when I have that relationship. It's you're working with what you have. What can you do right now? Not when that thing appears, but right now. So that's that's all that you can depend on in this moment. So just work with that. What you need to know about October is the Fool, so there's a lot of uh, fresh start energy, and if you've watched other um, videos for your Sun, Moon, and Rising, then you might know that... Um, that's been coming up a lot and I think it has to do with the change in seasons that we just had in September and like that cardinal energy that Libra is bringing and Libra season and so that's kind of where you get this this fresh opportunity to start doing things differently and that's kind of what's um like this is just showing that you have the opportunity to do that. And then the advice for you is the nine of chalices. So make a wish. That is literally the advice. What do you want? What do you need? What is it that would um, help you or give you support? Or it's just about like dreaming big, even if you don't think it's possible or you have limiting beliefs around it. You just want to um, focus on the big picture of what you want. Okay, so that is um, what the Nine of Chalices is really offering you at this time. That's, that's why I'm saying that manifestation is going to be super, super, super potent for you this month. It's like there's a fresh start, you know, and then we're going to be heading into your season. So it's like, ask for what you want. Focus on your big dreams, your big desires, do the damn thing and see what comes out on the other side. And then what you're experiencing, this is more of the external influence. We have the Empress. I'm going to clarify this for you. What is this? Nine of Wands. So there's a lot of forward movement that's happening right now. Um, I think that this, this like final, um, like this final push towards the end of the year is just going to be a time when I think you're really able to hustle. Like you're kind of seeing the new year approaching because it's getting close. And so I think that's just giving you a lot of traction to meet your goals and really start buckling down. I think that this is giving you a lot of motivation. That's why the Empress is popping up just as kind of facilitating your personal growth and your personal evolution and kind of the... Um, the birthing of your new ideas, your new adventures, your new whatever it is that you want to make happen is all starting to make an appearance in October. Like you're really starting to see things build for yourself. And then what's healing for you this month is the Emperor. So it's interesting. You have... Um, you're healing the masculine and you have the feminine sitting out here. So this could also be a person. This could also be someone who embodies really healthy femininity. And it's helping you to heal the, the masculine side of things. This is divine feminine. This is divine masculine. They like to pop up together. Um, and so it really is about like that yin and yang that you're working with. When to push, when to pull, when to relax, when to... Um, pursue. Uh, it, it's all about the ebb and flow of masculine and feminine in your life. And so I think that's really the ways in which you expel your energy and the way that you conserve your energy are um, being not, not recharged, but it's like they're just coming back into balance with each other. Okay, and then what's shifting out in October for you is the Queen of Swords. I think this is like 
ultra independence, like not needing anyone or anything or just having to do everything on your own. Let me check and see what the oncoming energy is first. Three of Pentacles. So I'm going to clarify this one as well because it's like obviously this is working on something, but I want a little bit more context on what the deal is with this. Because it could be working on, you know, uh, the idea of receiving help, receiving support, receiving the things that you need. Five of coins. So yeah, it is that like lack mindset or like nobody will help me. There's a little bit of like victim-y energy coming off of this card. And I think that's because this over here is like... I ha see I have to clean up all these messes myself and I have to do everything on my own and blah 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 and so what this is is you're kind of reconstructing that for yourself you're helping to um shift all of that out and instead move into a more empowered state and so that's where um this is really really interesting but part of that has to do with the the masculine wounding. So the wound of the masculine actually has to do with uh, taking away or giving away your crown chakra ownership and um, not taking responsibility for doing so. And so it's like there is like this is actually victimhood in itself. Like that is the masculine wound and I know we don't talk about it a lot. Um, because there's a lot, there's just too much mud. Like, people are too concerned with what's going on contemporarily to really focus on the original wound, which is removing crown chakra ownership and not really um, taking responsibility. So that's where... And then the feminine wound is carrying the burden of, like, assuming responsibility for um, the crown, the lack of crown chakra ownership. So it's kind of like you're really working through a lot of that and what, what responsibility is yours and what's not, um, what is within your control and what's not, where are the boundaries of where you should put your energy and your efforts and where should you not? It's like taking inventory of all of that. So that looks really good. It's going to be kind of cleansing here and you're really rebuilding uh, your relationship with masculine and feminine. Okay, now we're getting into the timeline. So if you're new to my channel, it goes first, second, third, and fourth quarter. This is where you start October. This is where you end October. So the first thing coming up is the heart eater. Okay, so this is actually looking like you. I think this is more about how you position yourself. And you might find that the way you're positioning yourself in situations is kind of setting yourself up for disappointment, pain, frustration, and other negative emotions that you might be experiencing. And so you really have to pay attention to like checking your expectations. You know, if you're walking into a situation with expectations or a perfect picture, that could actually lead to um, a whole other mess. Or if you're going into something, um, or if you're giving with an expectation of getting something in return, that's setting yourself up for um, pain. Like you're, you're going to set yourself up to get hurt. And that's kind of how um, we, we kind of use that as a way to um, communicate repressed feelings. That's kind of the tool that can be kind of the, the mechanism behind it. And like, I'm not saying that everyone does this or that it's a chronic issue. But my point is... Be mindful of your boundaries because you might find that a lot of your actions are actually contributing to the experiences that you're having, especially if your expectations and your desires are kind of um, unclear, okay? And if they're not being expressed. Okay, so quarter two, we have protect your heart. This is where, this is why. You have to set healthy boundaries as you go from, okay, I'm setting myself up to get hurt to, 
oh, right, I can't do that. Like, people aren't telepathic. Um, so it's one of those things that by setting boundaries, you're actually able to mitigate this experience. Um, by setting boundaries and, and making your expectations super, super clear, you're actually able to heal quite a bit of this. Now, third quarter, we have cast your sacred symbols. So this, I think, is where you really actually get into more of the manifestation process. It might be that you're trying to cultivate a new way of being. It could be that you're trying to manifest something or a situation in particular. And so it's it's like you are setting the intention, you're setting the tone. And so this is, I want to say like maybe do a ritual for yourself or play around with the new moon or uh, one of the full moons. It just looks like there's kind of this need for you to um, explore that a little bit and just see how it feels to you and kind of take advantage of this time and winding down and getting back into the groove of things. So it, I, I don't know, there's something about this that just looks like ritual to me would be really beneficial. Just a little one. It doesn't have to be anything major, but just something symbolic for yourself. Maybe, you know, a lot of people will like write stuff down and then burn the piece of paper. Like that's symbolic and it's just a micro ritual that you can do. So I would um, recommend just considering this. Ooh. Okay, now quarter four, this is where you're wrapping things up. We have service. So again, this is why I brought up here my intuitive hit was like not doing everything on your own. It's like you don't actually have to do that. You don't have to hide your feelings for yourself. You don't have to suppress things. You don't have to carry the entire burden on your own. You can actually get help like you can get support. And um, so that's where service is coming up. I don't think this is you being of service as much as it is you receiving um, support, help, care, nourishment, all of the things that you need. And that goes along with the Empress and the external environment. And so really pay attention to who's in your vicinity, who's in your community, and who's supporting you because it's kind of like that's accessible to you. Okay, especially if you're actively manifesting it, even more so. Now we're going to do a three-card pick. So pick a card, any card, whatever feels good to you. You can ask a question, you can set an intention, ask for guidance, whatever it is that feels good. Okay, card number one. The tower, so really breaking down the old systems so that you can rebuild new ones. It's just about kind of cleaning house, really taking inventory. What are the things that don't work for you anymore? And how are you making necessary adjustments for yourself? This is just about adjusting. Like, okay, something gets swept away or something kind of... Um, needs to go and that's creating space for you to have the things that you want and need. It's this is necessary for you to get the nine of cups. Okay, card number two, we have the emperor. So this is still working with that stability, masculinity, and really healing that is going to be big for you this month. Now, um, card number three is the fool. So this is a fresh start for you. This is, we have the fool popping up twice. So you have this opportunity to manifest a whole new set of whatever you want. Like if you're looking to manifest a new job, different resources, I'm getting that it's time to double down on manifestation. Across the board for everyone, manifest, 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 manifest in October. Like this is the month for you to manifest. This is a month, the month for you to do a vision board. It's the month for you to really um, start a manifestation jar. Like do all of the things for manifestation and just see how... Um, how it feels. But I think even if you're experiencing a little bit of resistance, like, why is that? Is that be is it because you don't believe? Is it because you don't feel like you have the energy to do it? Is it because you are down in the dumps? Like what's really going on? Because I think that the timing is going to be really great for you. 
Okay, so that is all that I have for the reading. Um, don't forget, if you are interested, my mailbox address is in the description box, um, and it is a physical address, so you can, I don't just receive paper mail, I can receive any, literally anything from any carrier, um, which is really, really nice to have, and what else? Let's see. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do pen pal stuff with that just because I don't I don't know how many people are going to use it like if it's small if, if I don't get very much stuff then I can definitely do pen pal stuff but if I get like overwhelmed with um mail then I won't be able to do it or I might have to do something on social media for it so um it's it's just an option, just another way to connect, just another way to um, get to know me and for me to get to know you. And I, I am just really excited to see what happens with it. So that is available. I also want to let you know that I am going to be going on vacation from October 5th to the 17th. And so if you want to work with me, it's probably a good idea to jump on that um, before I leave. Otherwise, I will be doing readings as of the 18th. So j just um, keep that in mind if you're trying to time something out for yourself. And I also want to let you know that I am changing my prices for the email tarot spreads. So single questions and one-on-one -on -one readings are going to stay the same. But my tarot spreads are going to be going up. Uh, by five dollars, so it's it's not a crazy increase um, as of November first. So I just want you to know that we are getting into my busy season. This is actually the busiest time of year for me. So um, if you want to get a 2019 overview reading or whatever tarot spread you want. Um, that is something that I'm going to start taking submissions for. Um, there's an option on my website where you can select for the time frame 2019 and I'll do it from January to December of 2019. So if you want to take advantage before my prices go up, um, then you're welcome to submit that. It'll be available to you on my website. So, uh, just, just something, something to think about. I know it's a little bit early, but I just thought I would offer it to you just in case. Otherwise, you can wait and just get it in December or whatever you want. So, um, other than that, I think that is everything that I have for you today. Thank you so much, Scorpio. It has been a pleasure. I always love doing these readings for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram if you aren't already. And subscribe, like, share this video. I appreciate you 100%. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.